Hi, I'm Cam, one half of the duo that produces the Transgenda podcast. This is a bonus episode edited from our previous discussion on sex, gender, and sexuality. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, welcome. This might have been shared with you by a friend, a relative, or someone that thought you would find our conversation interesting and enlightening. I hope you do. information and uh, to any new listeners who are coming in hello my name is anna i am a queer trans woman and these are the differences between sex gender and sexuality starting off with sex there are two sexes that people think of most often male and female and that's what it's assigned to you at birth within that realm of sex there's also intersex people who have secondary sex characteristics such as breast tissue um or bigger feet or whatever you want to focus on um that don't necessarily align with their sex assigned at birth i usually think about feet when we're talking about (laughs) so go on within the realm of sex you have all sorts of male female intersex people existing all together for example i am a trans person which means that i was assigned a sex at birth in my case, male, that doesn't match with my gender identity, female. My father, Cam, was assigned male at birth and identifies as male now, which means that he is cisgender. Sex and gender have nothing to do with each other other than that if you have a gender that makes you, or you, if you have a sex that doesn't align with your gender, that generally means that you are trans. Gender is the expression and feelings, and sort of all of the things that make up who you are and how you express yourself all bold into, like, one big complex package. So to break it down a little bit for you, you think of male, you think of female, those are sexes. Now you think of a boy and a girl, and you think, oh, well, like, clearly boys love tanks and, um, you know not playing with dolls, playing in the mud or whatever, and girls love dolls and looking pretty, playing dress-up, whatever. Yeah, throw those ideas out the window, fucking trans When the truth <laughs> is, everybody wants to play with tanks. Yeah, so exactly. No, yeah. I would love to shoot a tank right now at a transphobe's house. I'm kidding. So, <laughs> In a video game. <laughs> in a video game. Throw those ideas out the window. They don't matter. And say, okay, you have a male assigned at birth person, and they really love dolls, and they really love uh, dressing up, and they love theater and everything. Now, you might be thinking, well, doesn't that make him a her, right? Doesn't that make him a girl? No. Because if he says, I'm a boy, I just like playing with these things, he's a boy. Now, if he comes to you and he says, oh, yes, I am a girl, then she is a girl. You know, there's not any question there. Unless there is a question there. Unless there is a question. They gen- and they are gender questioning. And they say, I don't know if I am a boy or a girl. Maybe I'm neither. Maybe I'm nothing. Maybe I'm a toaster. Who knows? So gender in itself is sort of what you are, how you would describe yourself, your pronouns that you use, um, and sort of how you express. Gender and ex- gender expression are two sort of different topics Um, We have a couple of other episodes kind of discussing that a little bit more. This is just kind of a big overview. So sex and gender are probably the most closely related in these three topics, because for a lot of people, cisgender people, um, sex and gender are the same. And their gender expression can kind of vary a little bit, but for the most part, they kind of stay within their sort of like expected stereotypical gender, right? Where people get really confused is gender and sexuality. And these two have absolutely nothing to do with each other. (laughs) Other than the fact that your sexuality can determine what kind of gender that you are attracted to. So, for example, I am a queer person. I like to describe myself as a broad-range lesbian. That is because I hate men. (laughs) Um, But I am not exclusive to women who I want to date. Um, I love women. They are beautiful. But I also like non-binary people, especially non-binary people who present more femininely in their gender expression. 
when somebody I've never sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I've never asked you this before because we have not delved and I know you're still kind of thinking about all this. Would you be romantically interested in trans women? That honestly depends. You know, I am a demisexual person, but that basically means that I need to feel a really strong connection with somebody. And not to say that I couldn't feel that connection with a trans woman. It just needs to be like a trans woman who expresses and has more of a feminine personality than a masculine personality for me. Just because like I've run into trans women who are not that for me and I have not gotten along. That's not just like I'm totally open to date a trans woman. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm also open to dating a trans man if they express more open or like more femininely than masculine. And that's sort of where my sexuality can get a little bit confusing. (laughs) So say you have a cisgender man who, like my father, has been asked many times if he is gay and he is not. That can sometimes be a gender expression thing. I know that you are more open in your gender expression than a lot of cisgender men are. And sometimes that can be because they are closeted or what have you. But overall, I would say like, if you ever have a question about somebody's sexuality, and you're interested in them, ask them. (laughs) Hey, can I just say communication in romance and relationships is the defining part of good (laughs) romance and relationships. Like, it does not matter if you you are gay or you are straight or you are any part of this continuum here, you, from the very second you are beginning to think that you could be romantically involved with somebody or sexually involved with somebody, you need to begin communicating all the things that you and I are talking about in this segment here. You need to be clearly identifying what your parameters are for the relationship and what your sexuality is. And that's going to be a defining moment of success for your relationship. Yes. That all being said, if you do not have any interest in this person, if you are just friends or whatever, it's none of your goddamn business what kind of sexuality they are, what they identify as, anything. Where you fit in is how should I describe you? How should I refer to you? How should What should I call you? And that gets back to the more gender side of things. Sexuality is specific to how do I, a lesbian, interact with other people around me, whether they be female, male, non-binary, what Whatever they identify as, how do I identify with them? Do I want to sleep with a lesbian, like a girl? Do I want to sleep with a man? Do I want to be romantically involved? So going on dates and not having sex with a person, you know, things like that. Well, and I appreciate you saying that because here's here's my little bit of coming out to you in the conversation that I've recently had, and that's that I think I'm a pan romantic person. I mean, I, I really yeah. do think I am because um, I I have attraction that I can express to my own gender and to trans people and a willingness to to feel that I am not sexually interested in anyone but women. And so that's, that's, you know, I, I, and that's taken years to define that, especially mm-hmm. as somebody who's been um, questioned by other people, whether I'm gay or not, <laughs> um, you know, like that, that comes from, I don't, I don't thrive on masculinity. And so that already sets me apart from my own gender in our weird societal norms that get expressed. So, so there you go. I mean, as we talk about these things, I get better and better about being able to express like there's a lot of nuance to everything we're talking about here and there's a huge continuum there's so much nuance there's a lot of vocabulary that's maybe where a lot of you new people will get tripped up is that there's a lot of vocabulary and you aren't just and you're not sure how to communicate that the best advice i can give you is one, talk to the person who you who sent you this, whether they be trans, whether they be gay, what have you. Talk to them. Ask them. Ask them questions if they are open to that. That being said, you can't expect this person to do everything for you. You have to do your own research. There are plenty of very, very good resources online that kind of describe this in really basic terms, as well as once you kind of understand that, like, gender, sex, and sexual sexuality are all different things, you can kind of build up from there. For example... I've been referring to sexuality as a whole thing. That is not necessarily accurate. For example, you can be sexually attracted to somebody and romantically attracted to somebody, as we were just kind of discussing. And you could be neither. You, you can, can be, be neither. You can not be... sexually attracted to somebody, but also romantic, or you could be not romantic, not sexually attracted, and that all those things are completely valid. Correct. For example, my girlfriend, Emmy, we have a romantic relationship. We go on dates. We have a lot of hang out time together we have a lot of fun together but she is ace which means that she does not want to have a sexual relationship which is just fine with me we established that early in our relationship totally fine um no questions from me i support her unconditionally in that but you know that needed to be established right away in our relationship and kind of have that boundary set 
I am a demisexual person, which means that I am able to have a sexual relationship. I'm not ace like Emmy, so I'm not not interested in sex. It's just I need to have a very, very strong connection with somebody. So generally that leads to me being attracted to people who I've known for a long time. For example, AJ, my other partner, who I feel more than just a romantic attraction for. You know, we cuddle a lot more than Emmy and I do and what have you. That is sort of where the sexuality can be broken up similarly into how sex and gender can be broken up or gender and gender expression can be broken up. These topics and these categories, the the base three that I would say you need to know the difference between is sex, gender, and sexuality. From there, I would say start learning the difference between, you know, binary sex people, so people who are male and or female assigned at birth, and intersex people. Start learning about how chromosomes can affect things, because what, transphobes bring up chromosomes all the time? And like... Right. And chromosomes are scientifically a continuum. You're... It's not... Yeah. It's it's not <laughs> as binary as a transphobe might say. A scientist will tell you that, hey, those chromosomes are not one or zero. They are, they are much more complicated than exactly. that. Exactly. Gender and gender expression. So how you express yourself versus how you identify. For example, I express myself extraordinarily femininely, but I also identify as a uh, fae so fae fair fairs uh, as well as you know female and then the last categories that i would break up is sexuality in romantic and sexual attraction so those are two different types of attractions you can feel different things for different people all i am doing is giving you a baseline of here are the very very big categories of sex gender sexuality and then there are smaller categories and smaller categories and smaller categories as you go up that's why I like to use the term umbrella, because you can have the big umbrella of sex, you can have the big umbrella of gender, you can have the big umbrella of sexuality, and that kind of can describe, like, the little umbrellas underneath. Under a umbrella, <laughs> Ella, Ella. So, my father, do you have any questions regarding any of these big topics, smaller topics inside, from a cisgender, not straight anymore, man? <laughs> Welcome no, to the community. I, I, yeah, th- thank you. No, I, I yeah, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't want to ever step on the fact that things are more complicated, and I'm not trying to assert myself into the community. But it has helped me realize that all of these things are are continuums. Every every part of this, you can't even have an X Y chart to deal with this. No. It's like three dimensional chess. There's so many we, different layers. We will get into my. How do I describe sexuality, gender, and sex in another episode? Because it is a three-dimensional, four-dimensional, and five-dimensional chess game. Also, I just want to quick point out you are valid and you are a part of the queer community. You don't need to hide. You don't need to, like, say, oh, well, you know, like, no, no, no. Fuck that. You are panromantic. (laughs) Thank you. And just accept that. Welcome to the queer community. It's a fun place. Finally! I've been trying to figure it out, and there I am. (laughs) Thank goodness that you have exposed me to so much good media that allows me to uh, tackle these things without you having to explain it to me. So the only thing that I would tackle in this is what a transphobe will say is, oh, there's just so many things, you know, there's the list of all the sexualities and all the genders and all the pronouns, you know, like, why do we have to spend so much time labeling all this stuff? That's my question. Why do we have to spend so much time labeling all this stuff? Why do you have to call me sis? I'm not part of your community. Sis, I'm just a real man. What I say to that is, why do we spend time describing colors? Or different types of animals? Or different types of humans? I mean, like, you know, you are already differentiating between male and female, woman and man. So why is it that much harder to add on some extra descriptors? I'm sure that since you're so transphobic to say this that you're probably also a d- another listening kind to of our bigot. podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean like other types of bigots which are like yeah. racists and things like that and so you can di- you can differentiate colors right like you can you can add these into your repertoire it's not that hard it takes time and what i ask of you as a queer trans person is to do your own research and learn because i do this great podcast I am only one person, and I have taken on a lot of responsibility being an advocate and voice for a lot of queer trans people, but your queer trans person in your life or whoever maybe doesn't want all that responsibility, doesn't want to answer those questions. And just take initiative. Show your trans person that you really want to learn. 
and understand what they're going through. Or if not what they're going through, at least understand and show them that like you're trying to listen to them and understand the community a little bit better. But I I know that, I mean, I joke about transphobes. I know that our core audience for this are people who are generally trying to learn to be better because there's, there's two ways to approach this. I have a thought about how the world is supposed to exist and I'm going to enforce that thought on the world or ignore that any other way to perceive it is out there or I am genuinely trying to support humans <laughs> and and be there for other humans and so i'm going to take a little more time out of out of my day to educate myself so that i can be a better human to other humans you and i are very humanistic people and and that it feels kind of easy because we feel a sense of responsibility for that but i cannot understand how there are people out there that don't think it's important to especially hey people who label themselves christian and are saying like we we need to help humanity and we need to save people and we need to be like Jesus, and then not feel like understanding what humanity is like and who people are is part of that journey. I, I'm very confused by that. So, thank I, you for listening to our podcast to make yourself feel to make yourself stronger. In, yes, in and, being and, a and learn, human. and yeah. learn. Like that is as much as this podcast is chronicling my transition. I want my transition to be a learning opportunity for people. Would you like to support our podcast? Well, you're in luck. We have a Patreon now. Just visit patreon.com slash transgendapod, and for as little as $3 a month, you can support the content that we're creating. And for $20 a month, you can join our sticker club, which provides you with a monthly live stream, a shout out on the podcast, and a sticker every month from ourselves and creators that we adore. Again, just visit patreon.com slash transgendapod, and thank you for all your support.